they wanna open up your jaw. Here's the blue pill, take a say ah. All right, what is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal TV. 32 Chinese warplanes buzz around Taiwan in just 24 hours, the second highest number this year after the island nation admitted stationing U.S. troops. The reason why people are watching so close, obviously the announcement that the U.S. is going to be permanently stationed on Taiwan is a giant deal. 32 Chinese warplanes were detected over Taiwan in just 24 hours, the country's defense ministry said. In the 24 hours between Wednesday 6 a.m. and Thursday 6 a.m. local time, the second highest number of Chinese planes this year buzzed over the island nation, accompanied by five naval vessels around Taiwan. 20 of the aircraft crossed the median line of the Taiwan Strait, the Ministry of National Defense said in a statement on Thursday. Uh, again, 20 uh, passing the median line isn't a big deal now, but just a few years ago, this was a giant deal. Uh, going over that median line was a kind of a red line before, and they, of course, passed it uh, in the last couple of years. Now it's become normal. The one thing that people are looking for, though, is if these are drills for the real thing. And obviously, they've already done tons of drills. They've even surrounded the island. Uh, of course, now they're doing the same thing. They have naval vessels all around the island, and now they're loading up on planes. With the other events that have been going on, like the crazy hacks, and of course DMVs across the country just went down, people are ripe looking for any kind of event right now, because obviously the weirdest things are getting taken down, or possibly accessed. We're going to talk about this and much more on tonight's episode of Marfugal TV. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest. Download it, it's like an on switch and off switch, all you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, what is going on, guys? Uh, yes, uh, somebody asked, do you need a license for ham radios? Yeah, you absolutely do. It's a, it's not an easy one, too. It's a whole process. Um, somebody else said that they had info for us. If you want to get that info to Dex uh, during the show, he can actually access it and then give it to me. Uh, that's Dex at MarfugalNews.com. As far as uh, you said it f was from somebody at a base or something, I don't know. I, I couldn't read the all the way through. And uh, Connor B. Griffin says, Doom and gloom keeps me on my toes and aware. Well, first of all, it's voluntary doom and gloom. Uh, doom and gloom, I guess one thing would be uh, if it was like, you know, you're somebody that you can't get away from telling you, but if it's something you go voluntarily watch, then I guess who's the who's the doom and gloomer? Uh, if you're actively seeking it out, then I, I think that you have your answer right there. Um, otherwise, if you don't like scary movies, don't watch scary movies. If you don't like people's opinions of the world, then figure that out for yourself. Uh, you're a grown adult. Um, as far as uh, before we get moving, just make sure to go over to the website. You can have a full bibliography of every single article, tweet, video, picture, document over there. You can actually look for today's thumbnail. Just look for today's uh, Taiwan Surrounded and you will find a full link, every single article, tweet, video, picture, document here. Let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? 
Hello, Adam, and hello, Foodle Fam. I'm doing just fine. And by the way, if you do get that ham license, your uh, call sign is public. So therefore, anytime you share it online, anyone can find where you live, your name and address. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I've had friends that don't do it because of that. Um, as far as uh, what we have recommended in the past is that you know people should have somebody in their personal family network that actually has a ham radio license. If things go down, not everybody's going to be able to have a ham radio license and and have it. Now, one thing somebody asked is like, well, what does the license matter when when the world all goes to crap? Uh, it, it doesn't when it goes to crap, but it does matter now. Uh, you, I don't know. Will it matter? I don't think it will matter. If, if SHTF, if you have a ham radio, uh, what are the dangers of doing it without it, right? I know that you can uh, you can cause harm to other uh, signals and things like that, right? You could interject. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's more, you know, the, the licensing is really just learning how to use it and learning what it what it, how it works and what are all the different frequencies and how how to you know what the different types of antennas you can use what bounces off of where and understanding that and that's pretty of course there's a lot more to it than just that there's a lot of laws and rules but that part of it is actually worth it i mean i've gone through the entire process i just haven't done the registration um but it's definitely uh, interesting to learn so if you are going to get a ham you probably ought to go through even the free test online training so you can learn how to use it even if you're not going to get licensed so in a case of an emergency you at least know what you're doing yeah jeremy smith says what's the point of a license you don't drive it um well some things like that it's like if you so um like with drone operating if um if you want a commercial license you have to go through the same uh kind of lessons that a pilot does because you're piloting this drone in faa airspace so for instance, for that, yeah, but you do drive that. I get that. Uh, but you put it in a space where planes are flying and uh, and it could get in trouble. With the radio, I would think that you could kind of get into some trouble broadcasting on the wrong signal, things, things like that. Yeah, it's frequency bands. There are all different types of frequency bands, and there's different rules on what you're allowed to broadcast on and not. Uh, you can listen on anything, but you can only broadcast on certain ones. And then there's certain rules as to what type of broadcast. Otherwise, everybody would open commercial radio stations for free and they're not allowed. They protect those bandwidth uh, areas for ham uh, so that they can enjoy the hobby. And then they protect the rest for actual specific use cases that are defined by those different bands of the spectrum. Some of them may be military. Some of them may be um you know communications for cell phones some of maybe communications for fm radio for example or am radio etc well and then uh dex do you want to go over uh china is building military on a scale not seen since world war ii and is on track to be able to invade taiwan by 2027 yeah so this is coming uh from a u.s admiral i'm not so much sure about the date maybe the date is his opinion of had the buildup. i know everybody seems to think they're on the brink of going in at any point but even 2027 is not that far away um but you know the u.s navy admiral john aquilino aquilino, aquilino sorry i'm sure i'm screwing up his name says all indications point to the pll meeting president g's directive to be ready to invade by 2027 furthermore the actions have indicated their ability to meet the preferred timeline to unify taiwan with the mainland uh, by force if directed um he was went on to, to give other statements but more specifically talking about the rapid buildup, which we have been talking about quite a bit he's just this is just another figurehead but in this case a large admiral um with obviously much more insight um he goes on to say that uh, you know direct the threat of direct conflict between the U.S. and China is neither immediate nor inevitable, um, and then he his projected timelines align with those that have been given by others. I think retired Admiral Philip Davison is one of the other ones that said 2027. Um, I I'm more concerned about the buildup and the scale, so because uh, the dates are always they're always wrong. They're they're either predicting something and it's faster, or they're predicting something and it's slower, but uh, what he is specifically saying is the buildup, and this is the quote, on a scale not seen since World War II, the PLA buildup is occurring across land, sea, air, space, cyber, and information domains. 
Um, so that's that's huge. And when you think about somebody scaling up at that level, I mean, if you just imagine the level of scale up we did uh, for World War II, to think that another country, especially as big as China, is scaling at that same level, that's that's massive. And that's not that's a for for war, but it's also b for power and control. And we know that that's been their mission all along is to be the leading dominant power of the world. Okay, and then there's also the fact <clears throat> that overnight uh, there's been several periods over the last four or five years where China absolutely surprised the world, where it was it, it was incredible uh, that they popped out and they're like, wait, wait, wait where did the, all of this come from? If they're saying 2027, I would think 2025. The reason why is over the last five, six years now, I have covered stories where they said, oh, they'll be ready by 2033. They'll be ready by 2029. They'll be ready by 2040. Or yeah, one of them was 2042. They already had moved those deadlines up. Not only has the U.S. moved deadlines up, but what's crazier is that China has moved their deadlines up for all of their goals way faster a good example is nuclear weapons uh if we believe what they're telling us they were going to have 300 by the year uh 2028 or 2029 or something uh they they were going to have uh uh yeah i think it was 300 by then it ended up happening by like 2023 then they said that they would have this much now they're saying by 2029 or 2030 they will match the u.s the u.s has thousands how is that going to how how did they put that much forward in that little of time without them knowing it well they probably knew it they just didn't tell the public and when they do give us the hints they're building up like never like not seen since world war 2 that should be an eye opener for everybody on a scale not seen since world war 2 the pla's build up occurring across across land sea air space cyber and information domains think about that land sorry guys i'm still coming off my sickness land they are building like we've never seen before uh see we absolutely know they are the now the largest uh navy in the world that was not true five years ago uh air they are going for the largest air force and they're actively building as fast as they can and there's a huge chunk of people that be like, oh, well, one of their jets is or 20 of our uh, one of our jets is like 20 of theirs. Not really, because they stole all of our blueprints for all of our stuff. So you look at their jet and it's like, ah, it looks a lot like ours. And if you think that they really cut corners on all of it and they just made it like a knockoff, uh, I think that that is absolutely wrong. They they make knockoffs. They make cheap stuff through their companies, and those are low companies. That the big warehouses that make knockoff stuff uh, for Amazon and all these things, they cut corners on purpose. They are uh, doing cheap labor, cheap parts, cheap everything they can for the maximum dollar. And then guess where those dollars go? Almost every big company in China, and I, I would say almost every. Uh, I say I think it's every large company in China has to give a cut up to the government and not just like taxes. If they're if you're big enough, you are directly tied to the government. If the government wants you to do something, you have to do it. As far as the the sea and the, the air and all of that, they are building like never seen before. Uh, the space they have already had they have their uh, space station up in there do you remember when the three rockets there was three different times where there was a huge chunk of a rocket that was swirling around the planet and they were like oh we want it might hit somewhere in the u.s and everybody was tracking that piece of a rocket that's because it was a giant 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 rocket uh sort of like the the secondary piece of the starship it was a giant rocket that it was a one-way trip and they didn't care uh, if the, the part that dropped off, uh, they didn't track that or have any way to pilot it or anything. So it just went around the planet until it landed. They did that in a hurry. Uh, they put all three pieces up to their space station and that was another thing that they said that that was going to be ready by 2025 or 2026. That already is uh, done and up there. There's a Chinese space station uh, spinning around. They said that they want a, a miles long structure in space. Some say that that's actually already being uh, done right now. 
uh, that that's what they're launching right now. We don't get a lot of coverage of that in the U.S., but that's what's happening. Cyber. Cyber, they have a million-man army devoted to cyber alone. So there is a million uh, soldiers that are in front of a computer that can do anything and everything digital. They can make something go viral if they want. If there's a story they want people to think is fake, they can have a million people comment, I don't believe it. Uh, I, I don't think so. And what are you going to think? If, if there's a story that's put out and you see every single comment ratioed saying this is total BS, what are you going to think? Do you see, you know, John Smith saying this is BS? You see Susie, Bill, Bob, everybody says this is BS. You're going to go, ah, I don't believe the MSM. I believe them. It, that's the thing. They can sway even the propaganda. They can take a propaganda piece that may be true about about them or us or whatever, and they can sway it, it in the way they want it. Uh, they are experts in infiltration. And then the information domains, they're, they're controlling huge swaths of media. Uh, they are interjecting into media and putting their message through all sorts of media uh, media venues. We know that there were articles placed in huge U.S. newspapers that they paid for for a positive view of China and China's properties. They got in trouble. A lot of these newspapers deleted their online evidence of it. Uh, they, they took down evidence of it. This is all happening right now. And, and your friends and family are still thinking it's doom and gloom. It's not doom and gloom. It's reality. And we're adults. We're the ones that are supposed to be the head of our families. We have to get this stuff down. Uh, especially if you want to survive a survivable thing. This isn't like the, the world is going to be decimated into dust uh, by a planet. You know, it, it could be decimated by a planet. But again, it's something that most of us can survive if we actually plan ahead. That's why I, I think that it's really important that people kind of you know not be so afraid of it and start owning that humans fight humans have wars uh we're gonna have another war and you prepare for it now you will be set and comfy through it just like all of you were comfy through cv that he did our warning about that there was plenty of signs that there was going to be a demic uh we we knew it the we showed you we told you we said this is coming they're preparing for it. It looks like they're literally preparing for a worldwide uh, thing. And then it happened. It wasn't a lucky guess. They put out graphs on how it was going to affect the world. They did drills and exercises. All these drills and exercises are for the most probable thing. And if you prepare for the most probable, you will be uh, you will be the prepped possible. I don't know. I got to come up with a good limerick. And then U.S. wades into India, China spat, says border state belongs to New Delhi. Dex, do you want to go over this? And, the, and by the way, that we covered the whole India aspect of this. Who is India actually going to join? Everybody thinks, oh, they'll just, they're, of course, enemies with China. What if they do end up, China just says, hey, you can have the land. Uh, would they end up teaming up with China if they got their land they've been fighting over for uh, decades and decades and decades? That's a great question. Uh, but look, you know, Lincoln was in the Philippines and threw the gauntlet uh, back at China, and we heard China get upset. Now his State Department has come out uh, after China said, hey, don't mess with the South China Sea. So the State Department comes out and says, hey, you know, we're going to weigh in on this issue you got going on with India. And they basically said, we agree with India and we're going to side with them. Uh, the State Department official said the U.S. recognizes the state of Anchal Pradesh as part of India and rejects attempts by others to assert control over the territory. China claims ownership of the area, which it calls Zangan or South Tibet. It says we strongly oppose any unilateral attempts to advance territorial claims by the incursion or encroachment military or civilian across the line of actual control. Uh, that was Vedant Patel from the U S state department. So again, we're, you know, poking and prodding at China, especially with the, uh, you know, the, the territorial disputes. We're taking every position we can against them. Uh, we've put troops in, and they just came out publicly. We probably had them there for a long time. We just haven't publicly uh, made it available. But Taiwan did, came out and said, yeah, we, the U.S. has troops here, and we've got them right there in Kinmen Island, right there, uh, you know, two miles from the border of China, of mainland China. They're sitting right there. 
not just troops, but Green Berets. Um, we're doing everything right now. We put five, at one point we'll have five carriers in the Pacific theater. I think one will be shifting out for another, but still there will be five there for a moment, for at least a portion of time while they're changing one out. Well, everything is primed. Yeah. And it, it primed. and, uh, by the way, beans and Frank, no, you're not. Don't believe beans and Frank. He's not a troll. Um, by the way, Jeremy Smith asks, they don't even know what one is. Um, Jeremy Smith, I say this in the best way. I am super happy. It looks like you are new to this, even to this niche, um, not knowing about ham and all of this. And that's a good thing. We need people that don't know anything about this. Um, everybody really needs to start. uh, You're going to, you're going to, your mind is going to be blown if you stick around just from the community and what they're, all the stuff that is being talked about right now. It's truly like you, you, once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. Once you start seeing the world in in a new light, it's it's hard to turn that light off. Um, you, um, it happened to me after two thousand and one. It was like two thousand three or something when I got handed a couple of DVDs about the two thousand one event. They were handmade, uh, burnt discs, and I put them in the DVD player when I got home. And it was the it was like loose change and other, another one. And it was another one done by somebody who just burnt it on there. They did like a handmade video of themselves giving their opinions on it. And it was a grassroots campaign that people were handing out downtown Seattle. And that freaking woke me up and it made me question all of what happened. And it went through all of these factoids, which uh, again, this next generation has no idea. There's little hints of it on Twitter still every year on 2001's uh, anniversary. There's little hints of it. They'll say, oh, how did they find the identification? And it was all good. And this doesn't burn at that, blah, blah, blah. And again, we don't have to go over that in chat if you guys can, because it, um, it's crazy, crazy censored, but um, but they, the next generation won't know. That's what opened up my eyes. And then I started seeing like, well, wait, if I was lied to about something that big, what else would I be lied to about? And it, it took about five, six, seven years that it grew and grew and grew until I was like, wait. And now I think it's grown to the point where, I mean, look at how many people actually trust the media. And I think that came when all of us were talking to each other. The internet changed something in a big way where you could talk to somebody in India and talk to somebody in China and talk to somebody in Russia and talk to somebody in in these adversarial countries instead of just listening to the the news. You could talk to somebody in Berlin. You could talk to somebody in in, uh, uh, in, uh, Brazil. You could talk to these people and you could look and compare what you're being told. And that slowly through all of this started opening everybody's eyes like, wait, wait a second, that's not what happened. And slowly the internet and the the amount of information that we have, it's not necessarily a good thing. Now we have so much information, everybody's confused by all the theories, but I think it's, it's, uh, it really opened up doors that couldn't be closed. Nobody can really trust media anymore because uh, everybody that called, there's millions and millions of people seeing a story millions of people if it's not true then one of those people is going to be able to prove it wrong and slowly the media got busted on so many different things especially once cell phones came out it's like you have some weatherman pretending to be uh you know chest deep in water and then you see a cell phone angle of the guy uh you know in a pool or something pretending to be in some sort of storm when people are walking behind him in shorts so like this kind of stuff, it's, it's all changing right now. We, we got to figure out what the truth is. And it's, it's really, um, it's, uh, it's really exciting to see people come in and not know all of this because it means that there's somebody new that could spread this to others. And it's kind of like, it's a, it's a organism that grows, uh, in a good way though. All right. And then, uh, Gosh, my nose is so bad. Uh, before we move on, make sure go over and check out EMP Shield. Uh, again, this is a device that can actually protect your cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats against an EMP. So an EMP or electromagnetic pulse can actually uh, fry your car, truck, motorcycle, generator, house. Uh, and again, it, it can also protect against a Carrington level event, a solar event from the sun. 
What this device does when wired in, uh, it's very easy to wire in, 10 minutes to wire into your car. It grounds the signal in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it can fry your device. This same company has worked with agencies and been contracted by agencies like DHS, DOD, and the DEMSO team helping protect the Texas grid. Uh, so it is it, uh, Keystone military tested. Uh, it can withstand uh, multiple EMP strikes or even a Carrington level event from the sun. If this happens, this will keep your car running so you can get home to your family or to get out to bug out. So go over to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Also very important, uh, you will protect uh, your generators. So you, even if the power doesn't come back on, your generator will work. And again, if you have your house fixed up with this, all of your devices will be able to be plugged, re-plugged into your uh, generators. So go over to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Use the code MARF. It helps support us. We, we are independent. We're on our own. And we don't have a multi-channel network. So thank you guys. We appreciate it. Um, thank you guys for sharing our stuff out. And more so than anything, if you can, subscribe to our channel and share our content out. That's even better than anything else. All right. And then uh, Yemen's Houthi tell China, Russia, their ships won't be targeted. So China and Russia won't be targeted, huh? Uh, Dex, this is, I guess, exciting for the Russians and Chinese. Of course, what a deal! Um, you know the the allies of uh, China and Russia and Iran are coming together here, and they're making sure that hey, don't worry about it. While everyone else is avoiding the Red Sea, everyone else is not going through the Suez Canal. Instead, they're either not shipping, or they're just going to go all the way around the Horn and go past South Africa and come back around. Uh, China and Russia got no problems. You can you can come right through. You won't be targeted. You won't be hit. Everything will be fine. But everyone else, it's fair game. So, uh, yeah, the the Yemen based uh, organization has told both China and Russia their ships can sail through the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden without being attacked, according to several people with knowledge of the militant group's discussions. So. China and Russia have reached an understanding following talks between their diplomats in Oman. Um, and uh, Mohammed Abdel Salam, one of the top political figures there for the group, uh, said that the people who asked not to be named and discussed in private matters. So obviously they had called them, sort of called them on the carpet and said, hey, you, you guys are going to do this. You got to let us through. Like you can't be targeting us. And it sounds like they said, yeah, no problem. We, we got you covered. So, you know, if you if you're sailing a, a China flag or a Russia flag on your ship, you're probably going to make it through just fine. Everyone else, you're going to be worrying. So, again, the lines are getting drawn clearer and clearer about who's who's on which side, who is, uh, you know, in favor. I would have I would have rather seen these other countries say, "Hey, it's probably not good business to do that for anyone. Don't just stop it for us. Stop it for everyone." You know. But we knew this. You can have your you can have your battle, but going after commercial ships isn't necessarily the right way of doing it. Yeah, it's, it screws up everybody's economy, not just uh, not just the U.S. or Israel or uh, their allies. Um, but we knew that Russia and Chinese, we didn't see a single name that was Russia and Chinese. Um, there was one, I think, almost clear accident, but uh, mostly it was they were targeting specific ships. And then Schumer signals approval of Netanyahu address to Congress. So... They're going to approve this. Uh, this We keep getting these, um, I guess, other other people, other leaders of countries uh, essentially uh, going to our government saying, hey, guys, we need some money. Uh, but seniority leader Chuck Schumer on Thursday signaled he won't stand in the way of inviting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to address a joint session of Congress. It says, we'll certainly extend an invitation, Johnson said on CNB's Squawk Box, adding, I'm the one who extends the invitations to speak in the House. And if we just have the House, that's fine, too. Johnson said he'll also be invited to address the Israeli Neset. I think it's called Neset. And we're trying to work out schedules on this. So you can almost guarantee this is going to happen. What is going to happen at that? Is, is uh, Netanyahu going to plead his case on why this is the right thing to do? Uh, to not have us push back on this like they have been saying they are. Uh, of course, the U.S. and J.B. has been saying, oh, this is too over the top. And, um, of course, the 
world is divided on this, but it seems like the younger generation is definitely against uh, what Israel is doing. It seems like some of the older generation and the Christian community is, is for it because no matter what, they're going to back Israel. Uh, either way, what's happening right now is, is a very scary scenario because if they do go into Rafah, there's red lines from countries that they're not, they don't have a record for just setting red lines and that letting them trampled over. Uh, obviously all of these big countries have set red lines that have been trampled, Russia especially, uh, but Iran is kind of a, a wild card. You don't know exactly what's going to happen with, with everything with that. And then even more of a wild card is a group like Hezbollah, which you don't know what agencies are secretly helping it or whatever is going on there. But with this, Dex, do you, do you think that we're going to see them ask for money or ask for permission or what do you think? I, I, th I think what, what we're seeing here is the further, um, position, uh, further positioning of, of the admit current administration and Netanyahu divide that is growing and it's growing in a big way. Um, and it's, and it's significant in the sense that, you know, we talked about this weeks ago when, the administration came out and said, or leaked out, I should say, yeah, we if they if they go in there, we might stop sending military weapon, we might stop sending funds. Those are big deals. Um, and if the U.S. is not backing Israel on the actions they're taking, then Israel is going to stand alone, and that's not a good position for Israel to be in at all. They they won't. It, they may or may not be successful by themselves. I don't know. I mean, they are pretty powerful, but you know they. They do need a lot from the U.S. Um, they're not as bad as UKR. I mean, UKR couldn't even stand on one foot um, without us holding everything and giving them four feet, four additional feet to to put underneath them. Well, they certainly have but, a um, they have a bigger military yeah. than the group they're going after, but they don't have a bigger military than all of their all of allies. Them combined. Yeah, no, and exactly, and I and I think that they've got a lot of pressure coming from all different angles. So. Look, you know, things are, are going to get heated. This is, it seems like it's been in the media sort of tampered down, at least not talked about. But the reality of this dispute between Biden and Netanyahu, in my opinion, it seems like it's much more significant than it is. If you remember, um, we are the only ones at the UN that were backing them up. We were the only ones throwing vetoes in when the rest of the world was going against Israel the U.S. was there to protect them in the U.N. So, you know, as we move to the next article, you're going to see all of a sudden it's almost like we've thrown the gauntlet down. Yeah, and the U.S. is to bring a resolution calling for a ceasefire in the Strip, and it's going to go up for vote in the U.N. on Friday. So I, the thing is, is... I mean, is that not a negotiation right there, Adam? I mean, is that not them saying, like, look... We told you don't do it. You said you're going to do it anyway. So we're going to start throwing our, throwing our, our negotiating Wait, tactics at you. All right, we're going to go into the UN now. We've been backing you up the whole time, but now we're not. But what what I don't get is that a lot of us question what is really happening behind closed doors. Like if if JB is actually high five and Netanyahu, and this is all part of some other bigger thing that this is the question that a lot of our community asks is what is really happening? Like w what level of corruption is happening right now with all of these countries? Every one of them doesn't matter what side. And you, you wonder what the end, uh, is it really as obvious as they say it is? It's, it was this, it was that the thing that this all stems from people have a lot of questions about that day on the seventh, like what, what happened there and, and how it happened and how one of, you know, the country that surveils, uh, like no one else, <laughs> uh, didn't see this coming. Or actually they know they saw it came, coming. They had warning of it. How did it even happen? Uh, so what is the overall end goal of all of this and where is this headed? Are we headed through the Middle East sparking? Is this prophecy? Is this just, there's no stopping it? Uh, Dex, go ahead. I almost feel like they're politicizing it. I almost feel like the current administration and the current side of one party in our in our country is politicizing it. They're they're sticking with 
um, the other side, since the, the right and a lot of the Christians tend to um, lean more towards supporting Israel. So I'm, I'm almost feeling like, given the fact that we're in that selection process this year, that this is an opportunity, you know, to play that. And I, and I think it's a very dangerous position to be going into. Yeah, is um, is he secretly is calling Netanyahu? Dangerous. Go, don't worry. We need to push up against it to to look good for you know forty percent of the country. Uh, but don't worry, we'll end up having your back in the end. Something like that. I don't know. It's, it's getting it's getting complicated. And then the strip reaches tipping point. Doctors tell UN in a plea for help. Um, speaking of. Yeah, you know, and mind you, we don't know what's really happening. I, they, you can pretend like you know, you can pretend like you're super researched and you've read so much that you are knowledgeable. But we don't know what's lie. We don't know what information is actually being allowed out. We don't know if there's any true journalists there that are letting us know the the accurate information. That's the questions you ask when you're in this community. Is we don't know what is actually true, and we take everything with a grain of salt. At the United Nations headquarters on Tuesday, four doctors from the U.S., U.K., and France who have spent decades working on the front lines warned that the humanitarian situation in the Strip has reached, quote, a tipping point and that the invasion of Rafah would be apocalyptic. Pretty big word, apocalyptic. Uh, but you have 2.2 million people roughly in that small area. The entire Strip, which many don't realize, is 25 miles uh, long. When you look at a map, you think, oh, this is a, a state. It's 25 miles. And then they pushed everybody into half of that. So 2 million squeezed into the area of a million. That was about 12.5 miles. And then they squeezed that into less than a quarter of that space. So you have, uh, in, in fact, it's not, it's like a one eighth of the space. Now 2 million, 2.2 million are in that area. The rest of the country if we believe what they say is rubble. So even if they filter them through and say, Oh, you're not a, a terror person, then you can go back to your home. What home is there? You know, according to them, there's no homes left. So what has to happen here? And then the, the food and all of the supplies, they only have a few entrances and there's been many events where the food doesn't get through or the stuff gets shut down or, then they got to the point where they were dropping planes with crates of of supplies. How did that even work too? Like did did were they responsible about doling that out to everybody? Did people hoard? It, it, I could imagine if any in any country, doesn't matter where you are, if it was to the point where there's absolutely nothing and then the only supplies are dropping from the sky, you would think people would go nuts and try to get, you know, extra not knowing where the next supply crate was coming from that everybody would try to hoard and steal from each other and, and, you know, f freak out. Uh, so this whole thing is, is getting pretty crazy. The group pleaded for help for the, from global leaders as it discussed the worsening healthcare emergency in the strip since October 7, the result of Israel's retaliatory conflict in response to the terror attack that left 1200 perished and saw 253 kidnapped. Which I asked the question yesterday, how many are still uh, being held? We saw pairs of two released in the beginning, but then we haven't heard much about that. So I wonder how many they still have. You don't see too much about the families that have people there either anymore. I know that there's the groups that publicly speak, and uh, but I haven't seen much coverage of it. And then Dex, uh, this is regarding what's going on here and folks coming in over a hundred migrants break through razor wire and knock down guards as they crossed El Paso border in a wild scene. Yeah. They, and they were entering, uh, obviously illegally. They rushed a border wall on Thursday, breaking through razor wire, knocking over guards. Uh, the, the, uh, there was, they witnessed around 600 uh, migrants massed at the international border. The Texas National Guard troops were attempting to push back in small groups. The situation grew tense as the groups were separated out um, and the migrants were crying out for help and rushing to the gates and 
group uh they even said a group of men with hoodies gloves and winter jackets pulled the fencing away as uh, groups of five guards stood in a defensive formation to sort of fill the gaps um so this it was a it was a rush and it was not a typical uh, maybe it's typical in some senses because maybe this probably happens more often than not but this may have just been captured at the time by media to to be able to talk about it and show what happened uh, maybe this does happen quite often with guards, but to have them get to the point where they're being completely rushed and they're shoving back and trying to shut gates or hold fences up against them is uh, a, a new story, at least for us that aren't down there uh, and haven't walked uh, walked down and up and down where the, the Border Patrol is having to do their job. And these National Guards have been deployed to try to support the, the state itself and, and, and uphold the laws that it wants. So... Yeah, very delicate issue um, and very uh, serene setting to, to see that kind of activity happening. I can only imagine that if they see some level of success or if, or if word travels that this is the way to do it, then you might see larger groups, not just 600, but 10,000 or more trying to do a massive push through at once. Um, I know they flood at once, but they do it kind of semi-orderly because they're just there to be processed and get their credit cards and their cell phones and a place to go live. Um, whereas uh, if they if they feel like there's some other success to this, I, I fear that they may scale this up, and that would be bad. Yeah, and somebody said AI picture, or AI video. Yeah, you know the scariest part is that anything in the near future. How, how what are we going to do about um how are we even you think we're confused now with what's the truth and what's not imagine when you've got uh people that will be able to hack and get control of the best kind of sora uh video stuff by the way homework i gave you guys homework and asked you guys that did not see sora yet uh did you guys go and watch those sora videos do you now understand what we're talking about, about why this is so insane? If you watch the Sora AI videos, you would understand why this is going to be a scary world. And you, you might actually understand why we believe things are about to massively change more than we've ever seen before in our lives. Uh, this will change the world. It's going to change everything. People are worried about robots taking their job. First, it's going to be uh, videos and information becoming unbelievable no matter who it's from. There will be no... How is there verification of anything? Do you believe fact checkers? Are you going to believe one side or the other? Like nobody will be able to believe anything. At this point, they could make that. They could make videos of, of people... I guess there will be a job. In fact, if you were to make fake news using Sora, I guess the, the new job, and it will only be temporary until it gets good enough so you don't need it, is somebody to double check the video to make sure there's not like a third leg or a sixth finger. Like news editors won't be, uh, you know, they won't be editing spelling errors. They'll be editing sixth fingers and, and AI errors. It's a terrifying thought. Uh, Tyler Perry, as I told you the other night, had an $800 million studio expansion after the Sora thing. He stopped it all. He canceled all building. They were building an $800 million expansion of this huge studio because he makes tons of uh, bad movies. Um, but again, he canceled all of that after the one demonstration of Sora. What does that say? That says that he's thinking in the future, he'll be able to make his movies with Sora. That AI will replace actually hiring actors. That's and that was jobs here in Georgia, by the way. Yeah. That was, yeah, that's that, dozens, if not hundreds of jobs, correct? They were building that in Georgia. Oh, probably, yeah, probably ton, tons of jobs, just from the construction to then even the maintenance afterwards and, and all the actors and all the support staff that goes into movie productions and all that, yeah. Oh, yeah, think about, th think about this. Think about every movie producer across the planet. Think about how long credits are on a big movie. All of those names will be useless. All of those names will not have a job in the future. And that's just in that sector. Uh, obviously, construction work, driving, piloting, 
uh, any job you can think of, coding. If if you said if you sent your teenagers to school to go code because you thought that was the future, too bad. Now they've trained AI to train other AI to do what you thought your kid and that uh, that a fancy tech degree would do. J- just ten years ago, I I worked with people and I had clients when I was doing credit card processing and helping people with banking stuff. Um, you know, there, there were people that made a good amount that could survive and even thrive, even in expensive Washington that were doing coding for Amazon or for this or for Expedia or for Microsoft or Amazon uh, or whatever, um, the other one that's here. But now that's not going to be a thing. So you have all of these, uh, jobs that are going to be X'd out. What, do, what does humanity do when there's no work? Or maybe there'll just be a lot less work. What do you think the people at the very top are thinking? Well, we've got 8 billion people and we've got 500,000 jobs. This isn't a system that really works, right? Unless we get rid of money altogether and change the entire planet. How do you do that? That's what we're talking about here. And people think that that's far away. Something is coming. Digital, everything is coming. And... There's probably people in the back end, in the dark shadows, that are like, well, that won't happen if the lights go out. Heck, who knows? Maybe the lights going out might be like a a scary thing that people are doing to stop all of that. Who knows? But yeah, speaking of lights going out, if you guys have not, if you're looking for a solar generator, I wouldn't go further than a energy tactical, uh, again, uh, flex tactical. This is our recommended... Uh, solar generator as far as this is expandable it is modular meaning you can change it you can alter it you can add different add-ons just like bricks like lego you can add in bricks either battery bricks or mod bricks Uh, essentially you can leave with just the head unit and a battery and take it wherever you need Uh, um, or you can mod it out and have 96 batteries on it Uh, It has built-in heaters in every battery, so you can stand extreme cold temperatures as it shows in snow. Uh, But the really cool part about solar, it's quiet, it's silent. Nobody's going to hear you have one. You can run it inside, so you don't have to have a shed, a ventilated shed, and put soundproofing, which I've seen people do, so people don't know they have generators. Uh, Also, you get power from the sun solar panels you you can actually hook up a mod that allows you to triple the amount of solar panels so instead of four you can actually hook up 12 that's what's so cool about these systems you're going to be able to change and mod them however you want them and the stuff you don't want you don't need you don't have to do you don't need any extra frills you don't need them that's why the military has chosen this for the sttr phase two contract They are tough as nails. This thing is built like a tank. It's built like appliances used to be built. Uh, That's why we recommend this. The 1,500-pound latches, steel reinforced frame. I don't know if it's powder-coated, but that's what it feels like. Um, Again, I keep forgetting to ask, but that's what, if you've ever felt a powder-coated metal, that's what these things feel like. And they are extreme quality. The only downside to this is the weight. I, in my opinion, the only downside is waiting for them. It can take a few months. It's 70 days out at least if you order now. Um, and again, uh, that is my only downside with it. You can get one on Monday from a competitor that you, you look it up and they do all the same things, but it has direct ties to a country you don't trust. So again, I've looked at the two competitors that are really close that can be expanded, that are modular, do all the same stuff, go look for yourself. You'll see. You might be able to get it on Monday, but on Thursday, if SHTF happens, on Friday, will it still work? That's my question. And again, will it be using the, f- the best parts and will it be trusted to turn on? The military doesn't care if it, it's pretty. They care if it works and works every time. Go over to marfugelnews.com energy and make sure to use the code marfugel. We think this will actually help save people's lives or make them comfortable through a disaster. So go check it out. All right, let's do a roll call. Let's go over to the chat and say hello. Thank you, everybody, for uh, being here. We've got uh, Dale Val. And if you, in roll call, we just general state or province, you can meet other people in the chat uh, that are from the general area. You instantly have something in common. 
Uh, Angelo Perfilli, nice to see you. Dennis B. Howdy from Stanford, Kentucky. Nice to see you. Paula McLennan from France. And I'm so sorry my nose is just uh, killing me tonight. It is so much pressure. Ah, I sound horrible. I, I'm sorry. Central Wisconsin, nummy nubby. O-H. <laughs> O-H. I-O. <laughs> James Damron, what's going on over on X? Paul Barbicano from Lancaster, PA. Pennsylvania in the house. We've got Vegas, baby. Uh, Buck, foe, is Jiden. What is happening? Uh, Indian Sioux, Lord Andrew. Jeremy Smith, South Texas and lagging. Oh, Jeremy, and also you can exit out of the video and come back or reduce the quality or uh, pause it for a minute and it will upload and it will be a, a better watch, but you'll be a delayed a couple seconds. Uh, Ricky the Fool, San Antonio, or you can watch on other, other platforms if we're having issues over on YouTube or any of the others. Uh, go to go to marfuglenews.com to find the other ones. Dale Val, Jordan Brock, uh, Provo, Utah in the house. Uh, Utah, that's... Uh, uh, we have uh, friends in Utah. Awesome. And then BC, Canada, PA, uh, Preppermint. And time has sped up. Dr. Virtual and Power. By the way, uh, so we've talked about that before. And we might do a small show on that. But people do feel like time is actually sped up. As you get older, time goes faster right and it definitely goes faster when you get older there's that going faster like as you get older you, it it like when you're a kid you can't wait to be 18 and then you can't wait to be 21 after that it's downhill uh but after that it starts going slow uh, i'm sorry faster and faster and faster and 20 30 40 it just happens like that and especially when you have kids or a nine to five job and it just it it's like day after day, it they all blend. And I think part of it's our memory blending together very similar days and throwing out the garbage. So it's an illusion that it's going faster. But people, even kids, are saying uh, that time is going faster. And there might be a scientific reason for that. At least that's that's what some people think. That And by the way, if you are closer to Earth, time goes faster. If you, I don't know if you knew that. Or it might be reverse. It might go slower the closer you are. Gravity, they say, affects time. So some say that it might be because something is going on with our planet. Uh, that's why the atomic clock is set to the something or other. But yeah, there's some crazy things there. And people say that it happened. They think that time has gone faster since the Earth rang like a bell. Go look it up for yourself. It's a trippy rabbit hole to go down, and there's some science to back it up, or at least they say there is. So go check that out. We'll, we might do a show on it in the future. Uh, Dex, Russia preparing the wider conflict with NATO sooner than expected. Here's Even yep. if it's so rhetoric, have, it's scary. Yeah, so we have uh, some a study coming out from the Institute for the Study of War, and they have made the, the conclusion that they are preparing for a large-scale con conventional conflict with NATO. They don't think that it's exactly imminent. It's going to happen right this minute, but they're actually saying the sh it's a much shorter timeline than what most other analysts have been previously, uh, you know, posited. So the um, military is undertaking structural reforms, is what they're saying, to simultaneously support both the uh, Ukraine as well as the capabilities they're going to need to have a place to have a conflict with NATO. So they're saying that they're they're seeing that as part as part of their research. They study, you know, all the different activities that are going on with the Russian military and the other things like their economics as well as their um, uh, manufacturing. They also said the Russian defense minister, Sergei Shogu, had outlined several ongoing efforts to bolster Russia's conventional military capabilities, claiming that Russian military plans to form two combined arms armies and 14 divisions and 16 brigades by the end of this year. So they're actually combining um, some of their armies to make them larger. And so, you know, they don't necessarily have all of the details, you know, like they don't necessarily have all of the infrastructure, the military infrastructure or um, training capacity. And, and they think that they lack some of that. At least that's what their opinion is. 
But at the same time, it, what they're really saying is it's clear by the actions they're taking and the steps they have taken that they're shifting things to get prepared for. Now, look, this is not new to us. This is just their report. Uh, we've been saying this because we, we can read between the lines. We watch this stuff daily. You guys watch this stuff daily. You guys are talking about it. We're all talking about it together. We look at all the little bits and pieces, the movement here, the movement there. The production. You know, move, you know all of it, and we can easily you know, connect the dots and realize that this is actually happening. Yeah. They, the, the digging of the trenches across all the, the front lines, uh, the, the production gearing up the, all of the warehouses that have been shifted from making Q-tips to, to military gear and weapons and, uh, the shipments from North Korea, the weapon swapping, the hypersonics getting given to all of the allies, like, they're getting ready for a big one, but that's just our opinion, uh, and now that of many others. But how many times, if you've watched for a very long time, how many times have you seen not just our opinion, but the community's opinion become true within a couple of years, and now it's even history? It's it's kind of crazy. It's not it's not just us. I mean, it's it's the community in general. Our, our channel is a reflection of our community and preppers of course are going to get uh, a lot of this uh, stuff in advance because we're paying attention to it if you pay attention if you study anything if you pay attention to anything if you basically it's like practice practice makes perfect if you look at the news cycles if you watch what's on the back page if you see all the signs you're going to be able to put two plus two together it's pretty simple the thing is, is 99% of the people in the world, they actually choose not to know about this. They consider it doom and gloom. It is considered a, uh, what do you call it? A taboo. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to think about it. And they don't like people who talk about it because they feel like they're scaring people. Well, there's many of us that aren't scared by this and we're getting ready for it. And the people that are going to be the most scared are the ones that aren't prepared. Domenico Lavara, thank you so much, says, hey, great show again, Marf Dex and Mods. Hey, thank you, Domenico. I appreciate that. Uh, Amarillo Gunrunner says, howdy, or hoodie, I think, hoodie. Uh, Sweatin' of Ministries, it's all prophecies. God will protect Israel. Sweatin' of Ministries, uh, we're actually going to, we're, we're working on a video. Of, uh, I can't, I won't say it because if I say it, then people will, uh, I don't want to give any ideas. Sheila Story, thank you so much from Canada. Sheila, I appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, supporting Independent. Uh, don't know if that was a mistake. Usually you would write something there. You can write it as much as you want. Uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, always try to write a message or just a, some hello or a shout out. Thank you. Schaefer Girl, Addison Satterfield, Trilicit, Uncle Iroh, and Jess B. Bug, Stephen McMahon, and of course, Old Combat Vet and Jerry Schertz. Thank you guys. And Carol, I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Appreciate you. And then uh, Nana MT, hopefully you're doing well. Uh, you guys, uh, hopefully you're having a great, great day. Uh, a couple new members playing Dirty Pagrod and Will On To You. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Amanda Baker, Fran Breedlove, Evan Alston, Skipper Key, Philo, Carol, Dwayne, and Blue Dazzlebug. Thank you guys for becoming members. And we have Russia starts mass producing three ton bomb for use in Ukraine. You might be able to say that this is kind of like, um, so we have the Moab and the Foab. If you don't know what those are, the father of all bombs and the mother of all bombs. I believe we dropped a couple, one of each, in the last, like, five years. I wonder how these compare to them. Uh, they say the Russian defense minister said on Thursday that production of the FAB 3000 aerial bombs, <laughs> they're fabulous, uh, had begun in February. Uh, it says, Sergei Shogu, the defense minister, also informed that the production of several other bombs, the FAB 500, that sounds like a, that sounds like a, sounds like a, a makeover show or something. And the Fab 1500 also had ramped up, or a band. Uh, I won't say what kind of band. 
Uh, Russia's Sputnik News reported the Fab 3000 weighs 3000 kilograms. So I'm guessing this goes alongside all of them have different kilograms and it's general purpose aerial bomb used to destroy fortified military and industrial structures and shelters. So the more important part to pull out of this is they are actually building something to get into fortified military and industrial structures. These these bombs are put on. To, this is a conventional uh, bomb, not a nuclear bomb that can get into things like hardened buildings and hardened possibly bunkers. Russian military bloggers earlier this month posted videos of the Fab 1500 glide bombs, which weigh 1500 kilograms and glide, destroying multi-story buildings in Ukrainian held towns near the front lines of Donbass. How many of these are going to be used towards other countries if they do end up going in? Uh, like Georgia or Moldova, right? Don't know. You think that headline's wrong? And and I say that like, take take out the word Ukraine and put in NATO. For oh yeah yeah yeah, well that's what I was saying uh, for other countries, right? Yeah, Russia starts mass yeah, producing I mean, it's... three ton bomb for use on NATO. Think about that. It, it, yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, they, it, it's we know they're building up. It's what we just got done talking about. Why like, would they be doing that for Ukraine? Summit, so, yeah, I mean, they they've you know they've got a handle on UKR for sure at the moment. Like they don't, you know, sure they could they could they could use these, but building up this is probably. I think the person writing the story was trying to make get sympathy for Ukraine, but I think the reality is. They're building up the munitions because they're getting ready to either defend themselves or, or uh, attack offensively. One of the two. We don't know. Um, that, that's all they keep talking about on both sides. So, like, if you if I was living in Europe right now, anywhere near uh, Russia, I'd be worried. Yeah. And, uh, and quite the opposite in America. People just are not concerned. Look at what has happened in our south uh, border and look at the countries that – have I mean it's like an open secret look at the numbers coming in and the huge huge rise do you think that's just because they want the 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 American dream 18 to 25 year old military age males from all of our adversarial countries have shot up like a rocket go you know what's funny is I just refreshed uh the both red dawns within the last six months if you haven't seen the red dawn movie um uh, Obviously, the, the old one was propaganda of one kind. The new one was propaganda because we make propaganda too. It was North Korea propaganda. Um, anything that uses real military gear, usually the U.S. government has some play in it. Uh, who puts this in a great way is, is uh, Mark Dice in his book. Uh, but uh, our Mark, Mark Dice has actually done some videos if you don't want the, the full version. But he's talked about how the U.S. government, if they use actual military gear in Hollywood, uh, usually they have a say in, in what kind of stuff that they can put out there. And part of it is propaganda to either scare people or scare the U.S. or scare the people. Uh, back then, there was a lot of talk about North Korea. But if you haven't gone back and seen that, go look. You can actually watch just the intro. Watch the intro, the first two minutes and 30 seconds. I just sent this to Dex earlier. It's really crazy. It it, it talks about uh, basically targets inside of Russia getting hit right before their selection day. Uh, it talks about North Korea attacking Yonpang Island, which just happened. It says, uh, they because remember, they evacuated that area because there was artillery hitting nearby. Um, it ha it keeps showing JB. If you guys remember this, it shows JB because back when 2012, when they made that movie, JB was the vice president to Barack. But oddly enough, they use a, a tiny sound clip of Barack, but the rest are clips of JB talking about North Korea. So it's weird because he's now currently the president and it, it was, it was just a uh, very odd. And then they also, uh, what else they they said in there, which was trippy. They talk about Kim Jong-un taking power uh, and doing artillery strikes and doing all these things. It's so weird watching that 12 years later. And it actually has a lot of things that are 
happening right now. Oh, and Russia invading Georgia. And look in the last week of what's going on. Georgia, they just met with Georgia. NATO just met with Georgia and Moldova. That's That headline is actually in that movie. It's so weird. It's like, it's all scripted. And then the U.S. Air Force tests third, uh, third stage rocket motor for next nuclear missile. So lots and lots of updating of our nuclear missiles. We won't go too far into this, but again, this is this is the kind of stuff that you we follow. Uh, Dex, Air Force, uh, and uh, yeah, this was in Tennessee. They were testing at the um, uh, Arnold Engineering Development Center complex in Tennessee. Aerojet Rocketdyne and Northrop Grumman, Grumman, Grumman uh, were testing. Now, you know, contrast this with the story just before with Russia building up these massively large uh, bombs in, in preparation. And here we are also prepping up. I mean, this just happens to be one story on one type. It's not apples to apples, but the fact is we're continuing to build. So um, on one hand, you can also argue that we've depleted a lot of our inventory and we've talked about that quite a bit but specifically right here this is a major upgrade um, to some of our ICBMs it's part of a program to update them because a lot of them are extremely old Minutemans are very old and probably not necessarily going to be as reliable as they age even further we saw that one test recently over California that had to as they claim it had an anomaly and had to be destroyed Although we don't know, maybe something else happened to that one. Um, but this is the process they're going through right now to update those uh, nuclear delivery systems. And this is the one of the final stages, uh, or, or the, the specifically the third stage rocket that they were testing. So anyway, um, on one hand, we're continuing to invest, but on the other hand, I think we're depleted in lots of areas. And we've done that to ourselves at our own peril. Yeah, a lot of a lot of areas where it's kind of our own fault. And then oil rigger spots UFOs hovering for 10 minutes above the deck before zooming off in an instant on the Mexican coast where locals believe is a submerged alien base. The, the reality is uh, crazier than fiction at this point. A pair of UFOs were spotting soaring over an oil rig off the coast of Mexico where locals have claimed is home to a secret underwater alien base. A crew member of the vessel near Tampico snapped two images, one showing a saucer-shaped craft with glowing lights circling the base, and the other with a triangular design and three lights on the bottom. The witness said that the UAPs hovered for what seemed like 10 minutes and then just zoomed off in an instant, a source told DailyMail.com. Locals of Tampico believe the underwater extraterrestrial base has been protecting them from hurricanes for more than 50 years. Sorry, Katie. Oh, Katie. Oh, got a visitor here. About to tear out all my uh, wires. Zoe. Pretty kitty. Just don't tear out the wires. That's the mama kitty to the kittens. Uh, but check out the photo. This is supposedly taking, taken by the uh, oil rig. Is that not like super stereotypical of... I mean, actually, it's actually kind of... It's actually better designed than a lot of the stereotypical... Uh, uh, disc shaped UFOs. It's got kind of a uniform light system underneath. Or is it lights? Are those jets? This could be very well like US technology. Do you remember when they tried to make discs back in the 60s and they had jets all around the bottom and they floated and there's video of them floating? It could be something like that where it's a bunch of jets and they're testing some sort of new craft. Uh, definitely could do it down somewhere down like, like there uh, but very very interesting and then there's a, a zoomed in I thought yeah here's a zoom in image which isn't much help at all obviously anything can be faked uh, but it's definitely interesting to say the least what do you think it is or do you think it's uh, 
something at the, somebody else said it was a something coming face at it or something like that the angle that it was lights heading towards it but it was some sort of light trick or something I don't know what do you guys think let me know in the comments down below and if you haven't already make sure to go check it out right now the the sale is back on for the three month uh, there's two hundred dollars off on a three month supply of freeze-dried food uh, from my Patriot supply again this is one of the most affordable ways to get bulk freeze-dried food there's all sorts of great companies out there and again we actually represent more than one because there's different options for different people this is the one we have picked for affordability and most bang for your buck as far as being able to survive uh, and again this is freeze-dried food which once you add water in it keeps almost all of its flavor it keeps almost all of its nutrients in uh, and it brings it right back to life freeze-dried food just add water or cook in water or cook in even sauce and it brings it back uh, to to the living go to marfuglenews.com slash prep again you get two hundred dollars off with our code and or actually with our link you don't even have to do a code on this one and uh, that's again one month of food for three people that's a month and a half for two people or three months for one especially if you're trying to get six months to a year of food it it gets really really pricey uh, again so go check it out marfuglenews.com slash prep and then uh, DMVs across the U.S. were down, are down, I guess, because they actually didn't give a, an exact time of when it was going to come back up. We did a, a video over on news, but to sum this up, uh, DMVs across the country are down. And it, they say it's because all of these DMVs were uh, essentially all dependent on one third party organization. This is a problem, and this is a big problem we're going to face uh, in a lot of different areas as far as our vulnerabilities because many different agencies are dependent on one or another thing. So in this case, there was a third-party organization that ran their software or something, and all of the systems were down. My question is, was this actually a hack? And this is very freaky because DMVs... They do all the licensing, registrations, IDs, uh, licenses, obviously. Uh, and I don't know how much of... DMV doesn't do, do passports, does it? That would be a, a worry, no. too. Okay. So, But they do licensing. They do all of that. So you could make fake identities, which could then be used to go get fake passports, if this was a hack. Now, I'm not saying it was, but look at what happened. All, every single DMV went down and their excuse is, is they said it was all because they're all connected to this one system. Why are we so stupid that we have every single state and all of our critical infrastructure, including our systems that keep everything running well, connected to one thing? Dex, this is like really ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I mean, look... Uh, DO, DMVs are state. They're at the state level. Um, now, mind you, I think there's, with new laws of the um, real ID um, and other requirements for um, probably at the FBI level and others to maintain, you know, databases and things like that, I'm assuming that this third party probably has to play in that role. Because what else would be necessary? for each of the states to have to all use the same thing. They're in the, they're independent. They're, you know, state should be able to do what it needs to do. A DMV, it's li issuing tags, uh, issuing licenses so you can drive, um, maybe doing certifications or other types of licensing for commercial vehicles, things like that, um, doing driver tests. I mean, DMV, it's, it's a very specific state issue. So I find it very interesting when we see something like this because it is a single point of failure. So that Fed connection is got to be for ID verification, uh, the the trusted ID, real ID, whatever the system is that they they're using now that the Feds are requiring, um, or it's got to be something else as far as database tracking that they're doing uh, for for the Feds at the you know uh, for a security level type thing. That's that's my assumption. So for them to be hitting this. Uh, if it's being hit at all, we don't know. But for that outage to happen, if it's being happened, if it's happening because of a cyber incident, somebody is 
going after a very key component. And we're very vulnerable, the fact that we allow our states to all be tied to just one thing, that it can bring it all down. Yeah, they said every Department of Motor Vehicle facility in the U.S. has been hit by a network outage. A network outage. Like, it, it, uh, they're expecting dumb people to go, oh, well, they just they lost their internet. <laughs> no, they're tied, and they don't even give an exact answer. There's no answer to, like, w what it, what is the exact cause. It, this is really bad. Look at this. This is Secretary Alexei Giannoulias. I'm sorry, Illinois, if I'm saying that wrong. We are currently experiencing a nationwide network outage at our DMV facilities. All DMVs across the country are currently down. Uh, please call 800-252, blah, 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 before visiting our DMVs as the circumstances may impact operating hours or services. No, before you go. <laughs> it even says we are currently experiencing a nationwide network uh, outage. D do you guys think this was a hack? Do you think this was just a network outage? Was this just a, a mistake? Uh, an innocent mistake? An uh, inner take? That's innocent and mistake. I don't think so. Do you guys think so? Get push one in, in the chat if you think this was an innocent mistake and it's just a simple glitch. Two, if you think it's a hack. <laughs> uh, just another Zen says 100% a hack. Somebody says we doomed. We doomed. I guess, yeah, you can't get a license. Well, maybe the terrorist can. Who knows? Okay, so I think it's pretty unanimous. Uh, how many people believe uh, it was an innocent mistake? Nobody. <laughs> Peter Lamena, Carol, Angelo Perfilli. I think it smells fishy. An internal hack, too. An internal hack, too. Yeah. Something's happening. What if, while this is all going down, somebody at the very top is like... This seems like something right before, you know, a certain day in our future. Like something's going on. This is really weird. Yeah, exactly. So pretty unanimous on that. Uh, DMVs uh, across the country. Go watch our video over on Marfugal News right here. Remember, you can actually access that. Uh, of course, just click this right here if you're watching the replay, and it will bring you to our uh, exclusive coverage of that and other hacks over on Marfugal News. Thank you, AK Forever in My Heart. Thank you, Jillian Mason, for some Lemsip Cold Relief. I have i don't think I've heard of Lemsip. Uh, lemon Sip Cold, I'm guessing. Lemon. Uh, thank you, Domenico Lavara. Thank you, Amarillo. And then uh, Sheila Story. Thank you. You are a top supporter tonight. Thank you so much. D Live. Thank you, Scooby Doo Do Right. Cinny, The Undisneer, Wishka, uh, The Brendan Henschel. Brendan Henschel, you just followed? I know uh, you've, uh, I think you've talked through your wife's channel. Thank you. Or I don't know if D Live's never had a problem of people being unfollowed, but. Uh, thank you so much, Brendan Henschel. What's going on? Uh, you guys go check out Brendan Henschel if you haven't. Scooby Doo Do Right. Thank you for uh, hosting. Thank you for bringing new people over. Appreciate that. Poco Loco Sky House and CJ Seven Nineteen Sixty Nine. Thank you all. Dex, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Much love. Great job, brother. Much love. Nice. Have a good night, guys. Be safe. Be prepared. Marf out. It is now time for the shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shoutro. <laughs> One more day on the job, they about to go and rub you dry. They wanna open up your jaw. Here's the blue pill, 